we live in the best time in human history to be poor in developing countries. We are on an era of constant change where innovation follows a path opposite to what has been seen in recent years. Before coming to Colombia, I had the chance to work at the United Nations in New York, and there I did a bit of everything. I researched how to finance poor economies, I learned about biodiversity, but the thing that I was most interested about was the indicators of innovation, patterns. And while precisely working on that, I had an epiphany. Let me show you why. Until the 1990s, we see what we expected, a total dominance of rich countries like the US and Japan in the total volume uh, of patent filings in the world. But then, on the last decade, decade of the 21st century, something unexpected happened. We saw a shift where the rest of the world took over innovation. Today, I want to share two things with you. What exactly is this kind of innovation, the hidden side of innovation, and why is it important? I brought three examples that I would like to share with you. Uh, these are products that are fruit of the hidden side of innovation. The first one is this ultrasound. It's a portable ultrasound machine that was made in China by General Electric and costs 20 times less than in the US. But why is this innovation so groundbreaking? Well, 90% of the population in the entire, in entire China live in rural areas that have no access to the, to the hospitals. So we need to bring the, the, the hospital to the patient, which means the products need to be portable and need to be cheap. The most surprising thing about this kind of innovation is that you probably might have seen this product um, being used in, uh, by paramedics in the US when they are trying to access critically injured people. The second example of um, the hidden side of innovation, uh, innovation that is born in, the, in a developing country and then transferred to a rich country, is this water purifier. It's called Swatch, which means uh, clean in Hindi. Um, and it's made by an Indian company called Tata. It uses uh, all natural materials, leverages nanotechnology, doesn't require electricity and uses only and costs only $22. But the scope of, the inno of this innovation and the potential of this innovation goes beyond India. Because according to a 2006 UNICEF report, more than 125 million children, which is double the number of all the children in the United States, live in households with no access to clean water. So this product is hoping to uh, gap uh, the bridge between technology and the human need to drink cleaning water. The third example of the hidden side of innovation, coming again from a developing country and then transferred to a rich economy like the US, Japan, Germany, um, was born in Kenya. And in Kenya, two students realized how difficult it was to find a, a steady supply of electricity, so they decided to create something they called a smart charger. What is a smart charger, you may ask? Well, it's a, it's a simple device, a, a cell phone charger that is connected to the dynamo of a bicycle. And while you're pedaling, you are actually charging your phone. The most surprising thing about this is that if you were to, to charge that same phone in your house in Kenya, it would cost you probably $2. But this smart charger is being sold for $4.50. So there's always a constant of being a low cost that's, that solves a core problem. But this innovation, again, goes beyond the African market. So much so that Nokia, a European company, uh, saw the potential of this product and created a, a similar version to the European market. But if, but if, on one hand, we live in the best time in human history to be poor, in the developing countries, since we see all this wave of innovation in providing, uh, improving lives of people. On the other side, we live in the worst time in human history to belong to the middle class in a country like the US. So what can we do? How can we, cre how can we create wealth? How can we innovate again? Well, my answer is simple. Why don't we look at the hidden side of innovation? Why don't we look at what developing countries are doing? But to do that, we need to understand two core principles of the hidden side of innovation. The first one 
is that innovation doesn't mean adding complexity, doesn't mean adding buttons, doesn't mean adding functions. An innovative product would be, for example, a microwave that would have only one button. But to achieve this level of simplicity, we need to rely on creative profiles, highly qualified professionals. That's why it's so important to invest in innovation, in research, in education. The second core thing about the hidden side of innovation that we must learn is that we need to focus on social, local problems. And with it, we learn that we cannot only look at the, at the, at the short-term financial goals. We need to align our business success with social progress. By doing that, we need to align our economic goals with our social needs, which means we need to build more products in areas such as financial uh, security, aging, uh, clean environment, and that works. Look at, for example, what General Electric accomplished with his eco-imagination initiative. Alongside the, the, the reduction of carbon emissions, they were actually able to increase the revenues. The, sec the second thing that is very important when trying to innovate and trying to look at the hidden side of innovation is that we cannot see social costs such as maintaining a clean environment or promoting healthy lifestyles in the products you, you create. We need to see at these social costs as inspirations uh, for innovation. For example, that's what Coca-Cola and surprisingly IBM found out when they were trying to develop when they were trying to save water on, on their production facilities, they actually developed innovative ways of uh, saving water and innova innovative ways of uh, saving resources. So everything that I've been telling you about today is not about philanthropy, social responsibility. It represents a new form of economic success, a new form of capitalism, but not Gordon Gekko's capitalism where greed is good a new form of capitalism where we use greed for good. Thank you.